You know, it's not all about replicants, terminators, and galaxies far, far away, although blockbuster sci-fi is big business, no doubt. Star Wars, Avatar, Terminator, even the MCU, for example. It's not all major blockbusters or such critically praised genre entries as 2001 A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Blade Runner 2049, or Arrival. There are plenty more great science fiction films that don't necessarily get held up in such high regard. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 underrated science fiction movies you must see. Number 10. Pi Years before he briefly revived Mickey Rourke's career with The Wrestler, steered Natalie Portman to Oscar glory with Black Swan, and freaked out just about everyone who saw Mother, US filmmaker Darren Aronofsky made his debut with this very unusual, ultra-low-budget 1998 indie. Pi's status as science fiction might be disputed by some, but then it's hard to narrow it down to any specific genre. It might be classed as a psychological thriller, there are clear horror overtones, and even hints of fantasy. All in all though, Pi deals with the potential of the human brain, the untapped regions within yet to be accessed, and the bizarre possibilities of such an endeavour. This surely qualifies as science fiction. The film revolves around Max, a genius mathematician working on a theory that numbers can explain everything in nature. Attempting to make stock market predictions via the mathematical constant Pi, Max's computer churns out a seemingly random number, which turns out to have very significant ramifications. Max soon finds himself being followed by mysterious strangers, with all manner of sinister forces amassing around him in order to capitalise on his discovery. Or is it all just a paranoid delusion? It sounds confusing as hell, and well, it kind of is. But you don't need to understand the mathematics to be captivated by the incredibly tense, oppressive, mind-bending atmosphere the film generates. Number 9. Altered States Director Ken Russell's 1980 Altered States is another mind-bending entry that might be deemed to stretch the boundaries of what we classify as science fiction. William Hurt, in what was his first film role, remarkably, takes the lead as Dr. Edward Jessup, a psychologist who becomes fascinated with exploring different states of consciousness, theorising that these can unlock the origins of human intelligence. Through a combination of sensory deprivation techniques and a rare plant with hallucinogenic qualities, Ed starts experiencing these altered states for himself, but in so doing begins to radically rewrite his own genetic structure. As is the norm in a Ken Russell film, it's all trippy as hell and outrageously over the top, so it can be a little difficult to take seriously, even more so if you've seen the South Park episode that spoofs it. But aside from that parody scene sort of robbing the film of a little bit of its serious factor, Altered States delves deep into some fascinating subject matter, both as a speculation on the nature of consciousness and life itself, as well as a compelling drama about the destructive potential of obsession. Number 8. Colossal It's curious that a movie starring one of the best-known actresses currently working in film could be so widely ignored, yet 2017's Colossal suffered just that fate. In and out of cinemas with very little aplomb, reportedly taking barely $3 million at the box office despite the presence of the typically bankable Oscar winner Anne Hathaway. Still, there's no denying that the film was always likely to be too weird for mainstream tastes. Hathaway stars as Gloria, a recently unemployed alcoholic forced to move back from New York to her sleepy hometown. Bizarrely, her move coincides with the sudden arrival of a giant monster in Seoul. Naturally, this news grabs everyone's attention, but no one is more alarmed than Gloria, who comes to the shocking realisation that she is in some way inadvertently controlling the monster and its movements. Colossal is a very strange blend of grounded, lo-fi indie drama and giant monster movie. Ultimately, the human elements take precedence and the fairly low budget means that the special effects aren't quite so great as we'd like. Even so, in common with all the best science fiction, Colossal establishes clear rules behind the bizarre phenomena and explores them to interesting dramatic effect. Number 7. The Giver one of the great things about science fiction is its range, how it can encompass high drama, lofty themes, and sophisticated ideas, or at the other end of the spectrum, lowbrow, theatrical, Saturday morning cartoonish fun. 1991's The Giver clearly belongs in the latter category. A live-action adaptation? 
of the manga Bio Booster Armor Giver, it stars Jack Armstrong as a young, fairly dim martial arts student who is unwittingly fused with a piece of extraterrestrial technology that turns him into the Giver, a deadly living weapon. Originally released in Europe as Mutronics, the Giver is notorious for featuring Star Wars legend Mark Hamill in a supporting role, and as a result being mismarketed to suggest that he was the lead. Ultimately, there's only one real star here, and that's the spectacularly weird practical FX work. There's no denying that the Giver is an extremely camp, corny juvenile affair, often coming off like an unusually violent and gory episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, something that has long displeased fans of the darker, less comedic source material. However, it's just fun. Fun movies are good. Life is good. Everyone enjoy yourself. Plus, there's something very rewarding about a film which includes so many bizarre body morphing effects almost entirely via a practical means, with no CGI. Number 6. Hardware Writer-director Richard Stanley's 1990 feature debut can easily be classed as much as a horror movie as science fiction. It's also looked down on in some quarters due to controversy over its origins. Though Stanley initially passed the story off as his own, legal action by the publishers of 2000 AD forced him to concede that he lifted a lot of it from shock a story which ran in the British comic a decade earlier. These misgivings aside, it's hard to deny that Stanley's film does a tremendous job presenting a nightmarish yet eerily plausible future on a limited budget. Hardware looks set to launch the director as a major player in genre filmmaking in the 1990s, until the debacle of The Island of Dr. Moreau stopped that dead. Which is a very good book, by the way. If you like sci-fi, then you should definitely check out H.G. Wells's work. It's brilliant, but back to the film. While its primary focus is on a killer droid unwitting set loose in an apartment building, the real power and horror of hardware is in its world building, an irradiated, overpopulated dystopia where the prevalence of technology seems to have finally robbed the world of all its humanity. While its late 1980s cyberpunk aesthetics might seem a little dated, hardware is still an enthralling, thought-provoking and often genuinely unsettling work. Number 5. Robot Jocks Produced by legendary schlockmeister Charles Band and directed by reanimator Stuart Gordon, this 1990s sci-fi romp may seem like a blatant Robocop cash-in from the title alone, but it's proved to be an influential cult favourite in its own right. In a post-apocalyptic future, the resolution of World War III saw all warfare declared illegal worldwide. Instead, world powers now settle their disputes via one-on-one -on -one combat in giant robots, and the jocks who pilot these mighty mech suits become superstars. None more so than Achilles. Given this was a 1990 production, it's little surprise that the market and its principal opponent, the Confederation, are barely concealed stand-ins for the USA and the USSR. And in common with Gordon's horror movies, there's a sharp thread of underlying social commentary which may come as a surprise given how low-brow the material seems. Still, one can just as easily disregard the political overtones and simply revel in the rock'em sock'em robot fighting action. Robot Jocks has a tremendous old school charm thanks to its chunky anime inspired mech suit designs, mostly brought to life by a good old fashioned stop motion animation. And if the premise alone didn't make it obvious, there's no denying it had a major influence on Pacific Rim. Number 4. Strange Days Set in an imagined 1999, Strange Days takes place in a world where new, illegal technology enables users to directly relive memories recorded by others. Ray Fiennes, very much cast against type at the time, stars as Lenny, an ex-cop who now works as a black market dealer of these clips. But in the midst of serious civil unrest in LA, Lenny comes into possession of a clip that shows the murder of a prostitute, setting in motion a very dramatic, potentially world-changing chain of events. By setting itself only a few years ahead of when it was made, there's very little mistaking that Strange Days is commenting directly on the socio-political climate of the time, particularly in the wake of the LA riots. Beyond this, it's a compelling and furiously inventive blend of science fiction and mystery thriller, and on top of its political overtones, it also delves into some thought-provoking psychosexual territory, which is, um, interesting? Number 3. These Final Hours Science fiction typically takes its ideas from theories and speculations about our world's future. And one thing that all scientists seem to agree on is that, eventually, this world will cease to exist altogether. What happens if we're still here when that happens? This is the central premise of 2013's These Final Hours, an Australian film from director Zach 
Hilditch. An asteroid has landed in the Atlantic, sending a gargantuan wave of fire across the northern hemisphere, which has wiped out all life and will shortly make its way down under. In the final day before it hits, young party animal James heads out to a massive end-of-the-world orgy in the hopes of blocking out all feeling before death comes for them all. However, along the way he crosses path with a lost girl in search of her family and is forced to reassess his handling of the situation. Showing a world in which social order has broken down completely, these final hours doesn't paint an especially rosy portrait of human nature, as everyday people turn semi-feral, giving in to their basest urges. Even so, it's hard to deny that such scenes would ensue under the circumstances. As should be readily apparent, these final hours certainly isn't a barrel of laughs and doesn't make for particularly easy viewing, but it is a very thought-provoking, sobering contemplation on mortality. It also seems entirely plausible that Rogue One A Star Wars Story took some influence from its fiery finale. Number 2. Zardoz there are some that declare that this 1974 science fiction epic to be one of the worst movies ever made. For many, it's known only for featuring Sean Connery wearing a long dark ponytail and a bright orange proto-Borat mankini, which seems to confirm it as a high camp classic. There's no denying that Zardoz is the kind of excessive, bizarre, over-ambitious filmmaking that could only happen on such a large scale in the 1970s. However, it's also an undeniably thoughtful, imaginative speculation on what might become of human society should science crack the problem of immortality. Connery is Zed, a savage of the wastelands whose denizens are taught to kill one another en masse and equipped with the guns to do so by their god Zardoz, a giant floating stone head who visits their land intermittently. However, a curiosity-stricken Zed sneaks into the mouth of Zardoz in hopes of visiting the land of the gods. Anyone who's seen Rick and Morty might find this scene familiar because there's a parody of it in that. Once there, Zed discovers the alarming truth that his people have been manipulated by a decadent overclass who live an indulgent lifestyle having been freed from the burden of death. However, eternity has left them jaded and the presence of this proletariat brute sends a shockwave through their social order. So yeah, Zardoz is bursting with post-flower power weirdness and self-indulgence, has too many ideas for its own good and was never going to be to all tastes. Even so, it's clearly a pretty unique experience and a very rewarding one, so long as you can get on its wavelength. Number 1. Zathura, A Space Adventure Maybe above all the other films and genres we've discussed so far on this list, science fiction has been utilised to its greatest effect in cinema history in family films, from Star Wars to The Iron Giant to Wally to E.T. and beyond. However, Jon Favreau's 2005 Zathura, A Space Adventure is often overlooked. This was the movie Favreau made immediately before Iron Man, and it was here that he really honed his use of FX, brilliantly combining classic practical work with judicial use of CGI, incorporating robots, aliens and all manner of interstellar phenomena. It feels as big as any sci-fi spectacular, despite the action being confined entirely to a single house. The plot revolves around a board game that alters reality for its players. So basically, it's Jumanji. It's Jumanji with space stuff instead of jungle stuff. But despite that similarity, there's a pleasant timelessness to Zathura that makes it great family-friendly viewing at any time, and as good a film as any to introduce younger viewers to the wonders of science fiction. And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.